Time I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker, and I rise to oh, and welcome incoming speaker. I rise to make a contribution on the Modern Slavery Bill of 2018, and I state from the outset that Labor does not oppose this bill. This bill was introduced by the Honourable Paul Green from the other place, and welcome to you uh, here tonight. And, and it follows on the back of the Legislative Council's inquiry into this matter. I note that Labor already has um, a modern anti-slavery policy, and I congratulate our Shadow Attorney General uh, Paul Lynch for his comprehensive measures um, in uh, trying to draft uh, a policy that would be taken up by this place. And I note his comments and. Uh, the comments that will come forward tonight that, that we're in the same place on this bill. Um, it is important that we take action to stop what is reprehensible, unconscionable, unconscionable behaviour to force people into a life of servitude. Um, these things can always go further, but it is hard to get the balance and obviously in a political process you have to get a piece of legislation which will go to start the conversation. Uh, in such, um, I'm proud to be part of a party such as the Labor Party, which was founded on the basis of a commitment to ensure that people are not exploited. And while in keeping with the, ho um, the historical context of the birth of our party uh, and the time that it started, our movement initially focused predominantly on the exploitation of male workers. Over time, we have emerged as a modern labor movement which rejects exploitation of all people in our society. We have made, in the last 12 months particularly, a very strong commitment to strengthen our fight against inequality, wage theft. We have worked to ensure that on a whole range of issues, people are paid for the work that they do. Uh, and that is our major concern here. Uh, we are also very concerned about modern slavery. And I wanted to talk about that for a moment. You know, modern slavery includes practices such as human trafficking, servitude, forced labour, debt bondage, organ trafficking, deceptive recruiting, forced marriage and child brides. And it strikes me as we sit here, stand here in the 21st century, first world society, equipped with virtually you know, instant technology, we can see into people's <coughs> living rooms on the other side of the world, we are still confronting a scourge that is centuries old. These, <laughs> these practices are shocking and have no place in a modern fair world. It's estimated today that there are some 45 million people around the world who are victims of modern day slavery. Think about that number, 45 million, nearly double the population of Australia. Four times as many people are slave, in slave-like conditions today, um, suffering from modern day slavery and slavery-like practices than when the transatlantic slave trade operated between the 16th and 19th century. It's incredible. We believe that some 4,000 people in our shore, on our own shores here in Australia are subjected to these practices, including here in New South Wales. In the mid to um, late 1990s, I myself worked in the social justice coordination section of the Department of Immigration and Multicultural Affairs, as it was known then, particularly in the women's unit. The work that I did then was around stopping the trafficking, not just in the case of adult and child sexual exploitation and forced marriages, but also in so-called serial sponsorship of women for marriage particularly, and ensuring that women from overseas were aware of the circumstances that they were coming into in these relationships. We would have um, terrible stories told to us, and they are stories that have had a lifelong impact on me, stories of women who have been beaten profoundly violently because they didn't have the cans in the right alphabetical order with the labels facing to the front in the pantry. They'd been brought to Australia to live in a house where that was something, where their shoes, they weren't allowed to wear shoes because it might enable them to leave the house. Where they lived in a house where security cameras were outside to stop them being able to leave the house. Um, where women were told that they would be deported if they left their husbands. They were told that they would lose their children, they would never be able to return to see them if they left their husbands. Where they were forced into degrading and inhumane conditions, tied up, prostituted, forced to serve their husbands every whim, denied any medical assistance, any psychological assistance, any care or concern. Um, these were just terrible stories. And as I said, they had 
a huge impact on me. There were stories that at the worst, in, for a single man to have sponsored over nine migrant wives to Australia, and each woman came not knowing about the rest and thinking she was starting a new life with a man she loved, and then this is what happened. She was forced into this. So I think these are really terrible things. They, uh, once they were enticed here, they were abused financially, emotionally, physically and sexually. In the sex industry, we heard of women who have been lured to Australia, particularly women, forced to pay huge bonds, then live in abject poverty so that they would never be able to repay the debts to their masters. Living a life locked up, being subject to forced sexual slavery, appalling and humiliating conditions of life. And I must note, I acknowledge the um, contribution of the former speaker, the member for Sydney. That is not the face of our entire sex industry. In fact, not even the majority, it's a small part of it. But it is one that we as a modern society cannot <coughs> accept. And we must do everything in our power to stop that kind of abuse of women. Um, it's very hard for us, I think, who grow up in you know, Australia to think that there are people out there who would abuse other human beings to that level. And whilst it may not be on public view, we cannot say that it's not happening. We know it is. <coughs> Sadly, modern slavery is an all-encompassing blight, whether it involves sex workers, so supplying even the clothing and other industries around the world, housekeepers, uh, childminders, right through to those who are producing child abuse material. We know that women and children are particularly vulnerable to this kind of exploitation. What is commendable about this bill is the proposition of modern slavery risk orders that can prohibit people convicted of modern slavery offences from taking certain actions. And I support the need for miscellaneous components of the bill that amend the Crimes Act for cyber sex trafficking and child forced marriage. The cyber sex traffic amendment proposes propose, um, protection for children whilst targeting the perpetrator and those who may offer advice to avoid detection of these heinous crimes. Carolee Holmes, the Chief Executive of the International Justice Mission of Australia, is quoted to have said that the modern slavery bill sends a clear message to pedophiles seeking to abuse children through live stream sexual abuse. These she continues, these amendments will make a critical difference in our capacity to effectively prosecute cyber sex trafficking. This is vital to the protection of children here in New South Wales in our region. And that is something that I completely agree with. You know, as a Shadow Minister for the Prevention of Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, the amount of abuse of people online that just seems to be beyond the purview of any government to attack is, is an indescribably difficult issue to, to contend with, and we must try every effort to stop that abuse of people. As the Shadow Minister for Small Business, I also raised my support for this bill. Small business owners work very, very hard with their families, with their employees, to change lives, to create jobs, to do their best, to pursue excellence in their own communities. When we don't do anything to address the supply chain of modern slavery, when we let large multinationals exploit people all over the world in order to get the lowest price products and services, then we are complicit ourselves in exploitation and slavery. Slavery doesn't just hurt the people who are exploited, it hurts those small businesses who operate in an ethical manner, who pay their staff proper wages, who don't source their products from people working in slave conditions in other countries or even here. When we implement an anti-modern slavery policy, we provide a level playing field for ethical small businesses with integrity to compete on. We play to the highest values and model business practices rather than supporting the lowest scum of this earth. We all have a responsibility to procure our goods and services in such a way as not to exploit others. We should never let ourselves in a, be in a position where we profit on the loss of someone else. It is easy for consumers to criticise big multinational firms and to cite them as drivers of modern slavery. But without a market for cheap knockoffs, for cheap goods, where a society um, doesn't value women and children as humans and not sexualised beings, we we don't have a market for modern slavery if we don't have those things. But where we have a society which accepts that women or children or exploited workers are at a different level of ourselves and that we somehow have a right to get a cheap product or to just 
go along with what's happening because we see an advantage, we are complicit in that activity. We cannot say that we are good citizens on these issues, nor that we have good conscience when we accept goods that we know were procured through processes which enabled the exploitation of another human being. I urge the House to pass this bill. I commend it to you. Thank you. We, good evening.